Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's nodes are the TV node and the analog damage node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we've got some media here with our little green screen TV. And before we uh, jump into these nodes, we're going to go ahead and track these. So let's go ahead and drop in a planar tracker. Planar tracker and put our footage and we're going to set a reference time and we're going to change it to hybrid point area and a fine so let's go ahead and get our plane in and there we go and we're going to track forward so we've got our track in and it's doing something weird there. That's fine. That'll work. So once we get that, we're going to create a planar transform and we can delete this node. And we're going to get a merge and a corner positioner and we're going to reposition our footage onto our TV here and let's get that in there By no means it's going to be a uh, production ready so i'll just get it in there real quick and there we go and pump this into our planar transform and into our merge and now we just got to fix our corner pin And that works not perfect but it works so we've got our uh, new TV screen in there and we want to add a little damage to it so the first node I'm gonna bring in is the TV node let's bring in the TV and we're going to place it right after our footage and what the TV node does is it kind of adds TV scan lines and noise and different stuff to your footage. So if I zoom in here and we can change our scan lines. We can change our horizontal position and all these can be keyframed. So we can keyframe that, go to the end change it and now we've got kind of a rolling TV screen we can also skew it we can change the amplitude of our scan lines the frequency of our scan lines and we can offset our scan lines now we can also go ahead and add some noise change the size of it change the randomness and again here we can keyframe it go to the end keyframe our noise so we now we've got our noise moving around and we can also go ahead and add a bar so I will up the strength so you can kind of see what's going on and we can change the size of it the bar offset and again this is all keyframeable the problem is you notice this is uh, kind of transparent. So that's how this node works. It blends whatever you do into it. So for this to be usable, you would have to uh, add a background or re-add your uh, original footage so it wasn't transparent like this because we can see that green screen behind. Now this node itself is kind of antiquated and it doesn't work very well 
and that's where the analog damage node comes in. So let's bring in the analog damage. Analog damage. And this node is not a fusion node. So all these nodes I've been going over have been resident fusion nodes. Now fusion is a standalone program that just happened to get incorporated into, into DaVinci Resolve. So all these nodes I've been going over in the past have been fusion native nodes. So the analog damage node is actually DaVinci Resolve node. So it acts like a plugin within fusion because we can use plugins in fusion also. So just so you know, this is not a fusion node. It is a DaVinci Resolve node. So I'm going to plug this in replace this and let's delete our TV node because it's not good so the analog damage node this node pretty much automatically gives you animation with and without keyframes depending on uh, what we're changing so right off the bat we can go up here and we can pick a uh, preset that they have they have a bunch of presets the 80s but we're going to start with a blank one so we can go through all this now the telesense source we can add like a vignette kind of around it and you can change the aspect ratio of this vignette and you can add shutter weave to the actual footage so you can see it's kind of bouncing around a little bit not that great but it's doing it so let's get rid of that your broadcast signal, we can change our, our noise scale. And actually we need to give us some noise first. So we can add some noise. You can change your noise scale, bigger or smaller. And you notice this is automatically animated. So I didn't have to make any keyframes for this noise to be randomized and moving around. And up here we can add chroma noise. So we can add a little chroma to it and we can add some detail loss so it gets a little fuzzy we can change our chroma detail loss we can add some ghosting let's add that up there and then we can offset our ghosting so we can bring it over And we can add some chroma misalignment and we'll add that to the opposite side of our ghosting. So we got some chroma misalignment going. And we can change our, our color dials too. So we can change the tint of the screen, the actual color, how much color is in it. There's black and white or crazy saturated. We can change the, the contrast and we can change the brightness. Under scan, if we uh, check this adjust CRT framing, we can add a frame and we can change the image aspect ratio. So we can pump that out. And we've got the horizontal shift. So you can keyframe this so it's continually going. We've got the vertical shift and then you have vertical hold here. So this doesn't require any keyframe. This is basically gonna add some movement, some vertical movement and hold. So this V hold is how long it's gonna hold, whether it's short or longer. And you can change this latch. So once it does hold, how long is it gonna latch on before it moves again? So let me move this up so you can see it so that latch makes it stay in place a little longer so if you move it all the way down it's almost gone let's get rid of all those and you have overscan to change the size here and you have vertical scale so you can change the vertical scale and kind of skew it 
and we have the vertical blanking. So if I move this shift up, we can see our blanking here on the bottom and we can change how big or small it is. And then we have actual scan lines. So if we change the, the sharpness of it, you can start seeing the scan lines come in. So you can add some scan lines. You can change the frequency of your scan lines. And you can change it to color lines if you want. In the actual TV construction, you can change the phosphorus brightness and the phosphorus tint. You can change the defocus. You can add screen curvature and you can add an actual mask and you can have them transparent or have the actual mask there. You can change the curvature of your, your uh, screen curvature and you can change the aspect ratio so we can stretch this out to fit our current screen and then we can add a little more curvature to make it look like it's a rounded screen under VHS uh, the only thing you can pretty much do under VHS is change your uh, your restless foot down here on the bottom how our old VHS VHS tapes used to uh, kind of skew on the bottom so we can kind of add that jitter and the jitter offset can change and the height how high it goes so that is the TV in the analog damage nodes. I will see you in the next node breakdown.